What's good, DX Live? EICTC, your editor in chief, Trent Clark here, wishing you an early Happy New Year's, and this is DX Live. Clap it up for yourself, everybody. All 22 of you in the studio. Uh, Woo! Hey, keep my, it down, guys. Yeah, keep it down. Yeah, yeah. Trying to my trusty uh, co host, Jake Rome. Hello, everybody. I'd like to wish you a strong finish to 2017. Most of you. I don't really like all of you, but most of you <laughs> that comments. Strong finish. And I want to extend a very warm welcome to my good friend, talented rapper, obviously incredible model, Lola Monroe. Clap it up for your What's going on? What's going on with you? The platinum life, you know? Mm -hmm. Out here releasing mixtapes and juggling babies at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, I'm happy to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think people by now, they, they know you got really you got bars, you know, like, like you put the whole modeling career to the side and actually dove deep into the hip hop game and you right. really got bars. Yeah, I, I worked hard to get there. Right. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, For then, sure. and I'm glad you said that too. Tell us about, you know, there's a lot of conversation always about female rappers making it and everything. What does it really take for a female rapper to actually get some type of recognition just off their talent alone and not their looks? Man, it takes a lot of work if I'm talking about talent alone. It takes a lot of dedication. I mean, I spent hours and hours and hours just working on my craft and just studying and really focusing as an artist. And that's why I set the whole modeling thing to the side because it's like I wanted them to listen to me. Right. Can't really listen to me. My ass is all in your face <laughs> all the time. You know what I mean? So it was just like, okay, what do I really want to do with this? What's important to me? What do I want to focus on? And it was music. It's always been music. So that's what I did, and I locked into it. And you just have to focus. You got to dedicate yourself. Like, we're not talking about slightly. Right. You know? So it's really like dedication. Well, dedication six. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Nice, nice. But, um, okay. And so between, you know, rapping, you know, the family life, uh, King Los and everything, you were on a reality slash... In entertainment show? Yeah. You know, let's break down the Platinum Life for everybody on DX Live who hasn't seen it. Yeah, the Platinum Life is on E. Um, it's just about women that are in relationship with men that are also in the industry. Mm -hmm. And what we do, you know, our businesses, what we have going on. And it's a really, really good show. Like, the girls on there, we're all about something. You know, we focused on our business and really trying to... Not trying to set ourselves apart from a significant other, but actually doing it, you right. know, handling home life and also handling our own business. All right. If you had to separate it from love and hip hop in one word, what would that word be? Uh, from love and hip hop, it's not as much going on, you know. <laughs> kind of toned down noise. Yeah, it's, it's about, it's, it's, it's somewhat toned down for sure from love and hip hop. Um... Yeah, you'll get different audiences from that. Turn it up, turn it up. Shout out to Sid Willis in the comments. He said she still got it. How, how long have you been a fan, Sid Willis? And and what did when what did that fan actually? I don't even want to know. What does that still refer to? <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. How how long have you been in the game, Lola? Um, has it been two thousand and six? Yeah, like two thousand and six, two thousand seven. That's when I was modeling. Mm -hmm. And then I transitioned into music about 2009. I dropped my project, my first project. Um, so yeah, since then. So would you consider yourself a vet? Or, you know how people like when they release new music, yo, I'm just getting started, I feel like a spring chicken. No, I, I really wouldn't consider myself a vet as far as um, female rap yet. You know, as far as being in the game, right. I've been in it. You know, I've been in it and I've learned a lot. I've grew, the, I've grew in front of the world. I've grew in front of fans and that's why fans kind of connect to me too because they watched my growth. They were there throughout my whole journey. And so, as far as being in the game, yeah, I'm a bit seasoned. Right. But female rap, we, we, we just getting in there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Word up, word up. Uh, since the rise of Cardi B, have yeah. you seen a lot of comparisons or new standards being put in play of what is expected from female rappers? I will say this, I love this state of female rap right now because it's so much more um, 
It's a lot more support between the girls, one. Mm -hmm. um, less cattiness. Less cattiness, and it just feels like people are more um, open to diversity and just different female rappers coming into the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's something that's been lacking behind in progress for yeah. many, many years. So with it, with guys, even if you look at the interview when they had the freshman, 21 Savage, Lil Yachty, he's like, oh, I make feel good rapping. 20, oh, but Savage, he making, he's like, I make kill a shit. Right. I make <laughs> shit to murder people. Right. It's like, that's, you could just pretty much pick a thing that you like to do. You could be a nerd, you could be a skateboarder, you could be a gangster. You could be the lyricist, and you can win like big, big with any of those lanes. Females, you have to have this alchemy, this balance that st only Steve Jobs could figure out the formula to. It's ridiculous. Where it's like you got to be kind of, yeah. you have to be kind of Madonna. You got to be like kind of hypersexualized, but you got to be tough. But you don't want to be like so tough that it takes away from your sexuality. It's this odd combination that we're just starting to break down a little bit, and and. I, I think Rhapsody getting nominated for a Grammy was like kind of under the radar progressive. Right. Absolutely. Because it's like, why? Why does one female rapper have to have all these elements and she's the only one that can have that spot? It's not like that with men. Like you said, it has yeah, to be. Not at all. We have different mm -hmm. kind of rappers. You got the backpack rappers, the gangster rappers, the mongrel rappers, you know, all different kind of rappers. So as women, we're very diverse. Women have different things that they like. There's yeah. girls that's going to like me. There's girls, girls that's going to like Cardi. It's like, you got to have space for all of that. For, for these female rappers to represent the different women in the world, you know? And it's still not there yet. Like, you couldn't have a female Migos come, Migos <laughs> come out today. You got three mobile rapping women, and we're just like, damn, that's hot. Oh, what not, to like that's that that would be the goal, I guess. What right? to yeah. the chicks? I'm a boss ass bitch. B T A F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was man. Hot. Yeah, well, that was about where it stopped. That was yeah. it. What happened? They got signed though, right? And then <sighs> they got signed and it became. Well, actually, they shaded Nicki Minaj. That's what happened. Like Nicki Minaj yeah. rapped over the beat, and they said we ain't telling her to do that. And then plug was pulled. Yeah, uh, yeah, but you kind of Chief Keith PR school. school. <laughs> you wanted to rap over here. Exactly. Well, let me ask you this, Lola. You know, like, okay, female rappers are gaining inches and inches of respect and everything, but at yeah. the same time, does that mean that you guys want to stop, you know, being sexy? No, I definitely don't. We're sexual beings. Why would we ever want to stop being that? You know what I mean? I think it's important for us to represent that and have, um, and stand by that. Right. You know, what's wrong with being sexual? It's a natural thing. That's what, you know, we're born that way. So I don't feel like, that we should um, we should push it to the side. I think I did that a little bit when I when I first transitioned because I went so far as far as just vixen and things like that, and then I, just diving into hip hop. It was like okay, I kind of have to do something drastic, right. and that's like stop, stop for a second, like totally. And so I think at this point though. Um, I've grown as a woman. Um, I don't feel like I need to uh, prove myself anymore. Gotcha. And so I can be who I am, and you either go and rock with me or you're not. So as a female rapper, I think that if being sexy is what you are, you should be that. If you're not into that, then don't do it. You know, I don't think that you should do anything just to make it. You right. know? Yeah, I mean, if you're not sexy, just stick with your overalls. And sexy is a feeling <laughs> more than anything. You know what I mean? You could feel sexy in sweats. Okay. You know, you don't have to be a certain size. You don't have to look a certain kind of way to be to be sexy. You know, it's, it's how you feel. You know. Going on, uh, going off of two weeks ago when we had uh, Shaf in here. Mm -hmm. What did he say about Biggie? Biggie had he wore the, those loud ass sweaters, but he just wore them with such confidence. Yeah. You know. That he kind of sold, he made you believe exactly. that. So, exactly. yeah. shout, shout out to Shauna Wes, the Night Rider. He said, uh, "Yes, Lola, be sexy, of course, but never disrespect your body and yourself." I guess it was just okay. Yeah, message. Right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, actually, let me. Ask, what happened to the video vixen? Like, videos are still getting made. They're still getting a lot, millions and millions of views. But I don't know these girls' names anymore. 
You know, we knew your it name. Changed. We knew it changed so much. Peter Guerrero's name. I think I got out just in time. For real. I just did a um I just did a, a segment with BET on on the Vixen era. And things changed so much. The money changed. I was getting that bag back then, for real. The money changed. So the good life video, you weren't just a stand-in and everything. You got... No. I, I, got, I, I got racked up on that. <laughs> Especially on that one, for sure. Word up. You know, um, I think that the internet plays a part in it. You know, with social media. And, I mean, the game just evolves. And you just have to evolve with it. And when things change and things stop, you just, you know, you get out. But I got out before... The change, mm. you know, my reason for getting out. I was at my highest peak. I was still getting requested for publications and videos. So I got out before it changed, but Russell Simmons, it's totally different now. Put any requests in? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Stop. Sorry. Stop. <laughs> but no, that's, that's, like you said, that's the drastic change. For, for you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, she was in Kanye West's Good Life video back when, you know, video yeah. vixens were a thing and everything, and that was one of the hottest videos. It was a business. Of 2007, yeah. It was a business back then. It's not a business anymore. That's just... But, I, yeah, like I said, it evolved, so now you have, like, social media, and you have um, models. I can appreciate the change now for them because they can turn it into a business. They can sell products. They do different things, you know? Sell fit tea on Instagram, mm -hmm. you know? You know, I mean, a lot of girls, uh, like, they have over, fashion, yeah. Fashion over clothes. Lines and lash lines and, you know, hair companies and things like that. So, I, I like what the girls are doing. All right. Mm -hmm. we, like, we like that answer. Right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, we'll be, and uh, we'll be getting back to the music. We'll be uh, previewing her new mother video mm. in a little bit, you know. So, you guys make sure you want to stay tuned in for that. Yeah. And then we're on the topic of lyricism and everything. The good homie Black Dot. You know, I was uh, actually talking to him uh, a couple of days ago on the text message. Humble brag. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, you know, he recently came out and said that he invented, essentially invented mumble rap. You know, talking about Don't Say Nothing. Uh, you know, that song off of uh, The Tipping Point. Um, what a know, good song. It was, mm -hmm. it was. And, you know, mm -hmm. on, the, on the chorus of... Da -da 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 yeah. That was peak Scott, uh, Scott Storch. Yeah. I had yeah. trouble saying his name yeah. fast. Yeah. Peak, peak hip hop. So let me ask you guys this: Do you think Black Dot <coughs> invented mumble rap? Is he playing around? Or you know, a lot of hip hop heads. Oh no, Black Dot, you can't beat mumble rap. You're real hip hop. You're supposed to destroy these losers. You know, what, what, what's your reaction on that, Lola? Um, I don't know if he invented it, <laughs> but um, when you hear that hook. It definitely sounds like it's like straight up mumble rap. So I kind of get what he was saying, and um, I don't know because sometimes when when artists do interviews and it's written, mm -hmm. you can't, get you can't really get what in what narrative he was kind of saying it in. You know, so I don't know if he was joking, if he was like exaggerating it. But um, I can see how he would feel like that because it was so older, and then he. New rappers are coming out in this way, but I don't know. I really don't know. Jake? When I first read what he said, here goes here goes the story arc of my reaction. Man, shut the, you didn't, what is he even talking about, dude? I'll find somebody before, before, oh man. Hold on, what year was that? Uh, before, hold on, there's got to be one. Damn, maybe he really did. Maybe, <laughs> right. maybe that is the first time I ever heard something like that. I mean, I, rappers have been grunting and groaning since. But that's how you make a record. When the artists get in the studio, when we get in the studio, we mumble rap first. You know, but we, the societal trend. The the, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, to pick up the flow, and then he probably heard that part, and he's like, damn, it sounds good without no words. Let's just keep it that way, you know? But when artists usually go into the studio, that's how we record. We make mumble tracks first to figure out a flow. And, For a reference? Yeah. Okay. But you don't, like, Interesting. You don't leave that as the final product, though. Yeah, but how many people have done that, and it just didn't come out before Black Dog? Uh, plenty of people. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I think, I think you know, like you said, like you couldn't convey his tone and everything. You know, yeah, so Black Dot's right. not. Uh, I mean, he's he's serious on the mic, but you know, he's you know he's a pretty laid back dude. You know, he jokes uh, a lot. He's on the phone. I wouldn't you know. take it so serious, right? You know, right. The societal trend that a lot of people don't acknowledge is when you start making fun of something. You're still helping the movement. You're still pushing it forward. Yeah. To a point where, it, and then it kind of becomes part of 
pop culture, even though it may have started as a joke. Yeah. I feel like that might be kind of, kind of where he was aiming with that comment. Or does. Yeah. You getting some shout outs in here, Lo? What's up, uh, y'all? Adam Quest says uh, the dynasty is here. Hey, I love you guys. <laughs> uh, Brandon Baxter said, "Hey, Queen Ro." What's up? Uh, there was a there was a good one too. Uh, Leah the Grab says she's here for you, and so does Sean Harris. Love you guys. And uh, said said Willis said he's been up on you since Hip Hop Honey. And Leah the Grab wants to know: Do you think your beauty overshadows your talent? You know, is your oh, career where you want it to be? Are you sure it wasn't um, that, that wasn't for me? No, we 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 know your beauty <laughs> overshadows your talent. Yeah, check, check out the Jake on the bright review right. on the bright red carpet with Will Smith. Yeah, he's, I didn't even see anything but all but this, the beauty, all, right? this, all that fur. You know, American Werewolf in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, yeah, do you think your beauty overshadows your talent? Um, I think when you like approach producers, you know, like hey, I want to do this and that, and they just like you still with Lowe's? Is that mm-hmm. <laughs> this is an appropriate time in Hollywood to be asking that. I mean, look, I tell you this: it, it, they they won't ask, but I know it's like a thought. I know sometimes a lot of these niggas, their intentions are somewhere else. Right. But because I rep my home so heavy, you know, and people know, like you ain't. You ain't sliding up in nothing. You know what I mean? So it's just like the intentions of these guys be different. You know, so sometimes it does get in the way of work. Right. Because then they might choose not to work with me because mm. of that. Because they know they only got a chance. You know? Who we talking about here exactly? No names. <laughs> <laughs> no names. But it's all good because I feel like I'm going to be wherever I need to be. Right. You know, so, you know, if you're going to rock with me, rock with me because you, you get it. Could you respect my hustle? Could you respect my art? And you just, you see the bigger picture, you know? And I think it'll be smart for you, Bobby, but. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. Uh, Nicholas Anthony said, get it, Lola. We ready. Take your crown back. For sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, Stephen Mob said, she is so beautiful. She married, just curious. Yeah, she's, she got that common life, real rap marriage going yeah, on. Yeah, You know, had love and hip hop on the platinum life, you know? <laughs> Like what? Like how? How did you and King Los meet? You know, was he, was he so? I never it's something I never actually. It's kind of you guys just kind of sprung up, and it was like, okay, this is what's going on. Yeah. But you know, how did you guys meet? Was he a fan of the good life, and he started writing freestyle he, lyrics? To no, the he actually was a fan, but um, we lived like thirty minutes away from each other. He's from Baltimore, from DC, and right. so we would always run into each other, and you know, he was always try it. He was like this, <laughs> to me, he was like this. Cute boy, you right. know what I mean. <laughs> it wasn't like I wasn't, wasn't gonna take him serious, you know. And so I was focused on my work at that time, and we just became really, really close friends. We became best friends for like a whole year, and then you know we just connected, and it's been like that ever since. Nice, nice. Well, first comes love, then comes marriage. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out to King Lowe. So look out for the Moore's Bar review on hiphopdx.com uh, later on today. Later oh, on this you afternoon. guys reviewed it. Yes, we did. Yes, That's we did. Uh, so we'll wait for the wait to to the big announcement uh, for the uh, album later when it goes up. But I think you guys will be satisfied with the review. Did you hear the goat tape? Which one was that? He dropped that right. He dropped that like I, three weeks ago. No, I heard Moore's Bars. I, I'm mm. essential. Stop releasing so much music, nigga. Look, he is you on know, the roll right out, now. Out of control. He is on a roll. He is on a roll. And it's so funny because he just um, he recorded Go Tape in like a week. And then he put it out as like all on industry tracks. Okay. So he killed that. I'm featured on that one. Okay. And then more What's bars and he's dropping another project and then the album. How do you guys separate, you know, like Pillow Talk from this is, when we in the studio, you know, we, we got to make a hot track. You know, how, how do you guys, you know, turn flip that switch off on? Once we in the studio, he's not my man and I'm not his girl. Right. It, gets, it just gets real, you know what I mean? Especially with him um, being such on a level and I become a student when I'm around him, you know, as far as musically. He's like my biggest inspiration. So when you hear my records and you hear what pushed me to become the lyricist I am, it's like studying him, you know? So when we in the studio, it's 
it's work time. You know, it's go mode. He don't baby me. He don't like yeah. sweetie me. It's like, look, no, you better get this flow right. You know. <laughs> yeah. So he's serious in this. I've been in studio yeah. with him too. He's he turns and he turns into like this Diddy Kanye hybrid. Yeah. You know, he every you no know, turn it Everything. up. Everything. Like, no, no, no. Every check, little no. thing. Look, yeah. I love him. He's <laughs> very meticulous. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right. Uh. The Night Rider said Exhibit needs to drop a new album. <laughs> yeah. It's DX Live. It's, it's not scripted. You guys <laughs> say all the random shit that you want, and sometimes right. I might, uh, might call it out. Dude, can I, can I push for a movement in rap? Could, could there be just a two week period where no one releases anything? Cause I just get like backlogged on so much stuff. There are rappers that I love that I like listen to their album once or three quarters of it. There's just so much stuff, man. Can we get so much a stuff. two week period? Let's say that it'll be between Thanksgiving and um, Christmas, right? No one's a, an embargo on releasing music. That's when people we buy start shit. that. So yeah, they can buy the old stuff, catch up on it. It's not gonna work. I think that time has. I need it. I'm like just my brain is just full of beats and and I can't. I don't know verses anymore. It's like in Bad Boys, we usually only do the chorus. I only know hooks now. Even people I like, but start rapping anything good from the '90s. I'll go with you line for line. Yeah. But it's just hard to memorize any any verses now. Really? But from the mm-hmm. '90s, it was more. Lyricism now it's like, but I bought so you only buy you. Only, I mean, well, I only had money to buy you know, I don't know, 20 CDs a year or something, and then you listen to a few others, but you listen to what you got, so you just listen to it more and more and more and more. Like now, my ADD is like Olympic level to where it's hard for me. I'll start, I I'll think I'm listening to a full album halfway through a song, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is out too, and then. Gucci releases an album, and it's got the the yeah. greatest title album cover I've ever seen. El Gato, the Human Glacier. Ah, I guess I better listen to that. You know what it I is? Guess, it's, 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 it's not even ABD. It's called adulting. You know, when we were kids, you know, all we had to do was play outside and piss off our mm-hmm. teachers and listen to rap music. Yeah. You know? So uh, we don't have the same, you know, when I go to these shows, especially for these colored haired mumble motherfuckers you know uh, the kids in the, in the audience they know every word he only calls you mumble motherfuckers because he doesn't know your names individually right <laughs> i mean l- l- little so, pill little, no, pill. little syrup little oh, syrup God. little little gram uh but yeah it's uh nicholas anthony wants to know are you putting music on itunes spotify title all that good stuff i will i will i will be on um, what i'm doing right now like the first video I'm dropping today um I'm just releasing music right now and it'll be like SoundCloud uh DX um yeah. just a different the different sites like that YouTube and then um when it comes time for project and the single that I'm going with then it'll be on those platforms okay nice, nice. Yeah. But right now I just want to feed the fans I just want to put out music I just want to flood it and just you know my fans just been so patient with me, you know, and they've been holding me down this whole time. So it's like, just, just give it to them, you know. Oh, that's a, that's a good feeling to have fans. Some of you rappers out there, y'all ain't got them. Uh, <laughs> I, I look at the numbers. Damn. That's true. That's true. And, but you, you know, can build them. <laughs> you can. You can. Everybody just needs to be strategic. Everybody thinks For the sure. internet is this big gateway to b- blow it up, and it's not. Man. No, it's not because, like he said, it's just so much content right now, and it's like so much music being put out that. It's really not like, oh, just put it out and you get fans. You really got to work. Uh, you had a good one, too. An- Antoine Mack, the turn of the Mac. Thank you for coming uh, back to DX Live. Uh, <laughs> he said, who's your favorite film MC of all? Who's your favorite female rapper of all time? Of all time? Yeah. Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard because... Just say you don't listen to... I don't it's listen not, for to not hard for me. I get inspiration from dudes. No, because of course, of course, people <laughs> rappers inspire me. Um, I don't know because I, I loved was... Fox. I, I think Foxy was more who I related to. Right. Um, I like related Chrissy to Foxy and Sassy, more. Yeah, she was street. Rich. She was street. Um, she was just the pretty street girl that was with the niggas. You right. know what I mean? So I related to her more. 
her content. Um, Lauren, God, I love Lauren. I love Lauren. She just, I love Lauren to this day. Um, Kim, who did she inspire? You know, she changed the game so many ways. I'm gonna listen to Trina too. It's just different because like I said, they had so many different styles and they represented different things. So I just love them for different reasons. You know what I mean? But I definitely related to Foxy the most. Okay. Yeah, that's the first person you said. So that's what I was going to take. That's, yeah, you yeah, know, you can't yeah, put multiple did, answers did, on your scantron. They're all tied for silver medal. They're all <laughs> wonderful second place artists. Who's your Who's your favorite? Missy Elliott, man. You have best oh, music yeah. videos of any rapper oh. are Missy Elliott. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think she had the most creativity, versatile style, and she mixed. Everything that I said were female rap, like I hope that it can progress to. She kind of was the exception that proved the rule to that. And she like flipped different sounds. She, she got some know. mobile rap too. She Izzy, did. Izzy, uh, 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 the, oh! Something, 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 that. Go. In your face, did. Black Thought. Text him right now. Text him right I now. I will. Thank Missy you. Did. I will. Damn, she did. I will. I will. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Black Dot live on DX Live, telling Missy Elliott. Uh, Missy made it. Beef. Made it so that she represented being yourself no matter what, for sure. Mm -hmm. And like, if you look at how big Timbaland is in the big scheme of things, how much did she push that the way that like Snoop up? I mean, Dre is Dre, but Snoop certainly added an extra notch on his career. Yeah. You know, so. They work well together, and that that's something that benefits everybody. But and she wrote, she wrote so many records mm -hmm. for different seven hundred two B records and genuine Aaliyah reason for you know what I mean behind Aaliyah go go tweets uh, Aaliyah DeGrasse said Charlie Baltimore no no Charlie was dope she her, her dope voice, she just never she did it yeah no. this whole no. Crazy. And uh, Kenny, uh, yeah, so I, I, I second that Missy Elliott. I do like Foxy. I do like Lil' Kim. I think Lil' Kim has the best female rap career. For sure. we, we didn't get enough Lauryn Hill. Well, Missy Elliott does. Yeah. But, but I can't excuse you. Lauryn Hill. Lil' Kim's the best. Ah. It's hard. See, yeah. it's hard, right? It's hard. Lauryn Hill, it's hard. The only thing is, we didn't get enough Lauryn Hill, but, but that wasn't some outside circumstance. That was kind of her own self-sabotage. Right. To this day, you buy a ticket knowing it's a 50-50 shot, you'll get to see her within an hour of the showtime, if at all. What Was it self-sabotage? Was it, is it self-sabotage mm -hmm. to us? Or is that a choice that she made yeah, because she, went outside. she found, yeah, she found freedom in something else. So her. Her. And, that's, and that's fine, but I'm saying like, <laughs> so I promote self-happiness no matter what. The case, but I'm saying if she's happy with herself, great. But outside of that, objectively, to us talking to about us, her, yeah, to us, that is that just is what it is, you know. Oh, you got some more good questions uh, in here. Uh, Kenny sent Santiago, Lola and Los joint uh, album. We will be working on a project together for sure. Well, Bonnie Clyde. We already have like certain records that set, set aside on. that you know. But right now, he's just gonna focus on his stuff. I'm definitely gonna focus on my stuff, put that out, and when the time is right, we come together and put out a project, for sure. Okay, there you have it. Uh, Kenny, you heard it here first on DX Live. Uh, Lee DeGrasse said Brick City, absolutely. Uh, Jonathan Scott says, do you plan on signing to a label or do you prefer being independent? I love being independent right now. Um, but you see the labels are like you see what they're doing to Cardi they like gave up money to fix it teeth you know like they yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they they definitely dishing out mm -hmm. you, you can you can appreciate that um I did so much independently I got my BET nomination mm -hmm. you know I, I moved around a lot independently so I know what I'm capable of and I think right now it's just important for me to build rebuild my foundation um and focus on that and the right business comes along right. and it makes sense i'm definitely gonna you know see what that's about for sure yeah that just actually happened in nifty hustle you know it yeah took forever exactly. to sign on a label but you know when it finally made sense with the c-e-n-t-s exactly you know. you know i think i think having patience is a very important thing and i never i never chased the dollar i just never did that i said no more in my career than i ever said yeah and so i'm um, just being patient strategic and um, seeing the bigger picture, right? You know, 
Yes. You gotta respect Nipsey. You know, he, he was strategic, he planned it out, he was patient, he was business minded. And then when it made sense, he did a joint venture with the label. So. No, no, no I agree. I agree. Over on YouTube, they in here acting a fucking fool, but I'm going to weed through some of these dope comments. Uh, Trey Deuce Music said, Y'all forgot about Eve. Oh, Eve. I mean, Eve was dope. Man. I'm a big Eve fan. Eve was dope. My first Hotmail password was Eve Looks Good. <laughs> uh, but. Not Eve Looks Good. It was. Eve Looks Good. Uh, but. I think Eve kind of slid in after there was a lot of pioneers yeah. that paved the way and For then sure. got out uh, before, you know, like she got the bag and, and, and you know, and, and ran. And, and now she she's got on. to the other bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's going to other bag. A couple other bags. Reality, uh, not reality TV, but regular TV. Right. The, uh, the sitcom, UPN, movies. Mm -hmm. And now she's on the talk show, you know. She's and on the talk show. Yeah, she's on the talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, people want different things, you know what I mean? They come in the game, they want different things. So to us, it might be, uh, they fell off or they sabotaged it, but people come in the game with different agendas, you know? Yep. Different things that they love. Yeah, yeah, and the you know, the end justifies the means. Yeah. The end is pretty good for her. Plus, she has the most relatable line in movie history for my personal life, who drank my damn apple juice? <laughs> it worked in high school and college years. Constant, constant, constant issue with that. So that one pulls it, tugs at the old heartstrings. And they're they're giving uh, props to um, Queen Latifah too. You know? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, she paved the way. Yeah, she definitely. paved the way for Kim. She paved the way for the ones that paved the way for me. So. Word up, word up. So, let's, let's, let's get into. Uh, Let's get into this uh, this 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 mother video. You know, let's. Okay. What what is what is it about? What's the concept? You know, when you Google mother, you know who comes up? That bald head scallywag. Shout out to her and everything. What are you conveying in this song? Um, mother is basically like one of the. I fell in love with this beat. It's about Reezy. Um, you know, my go-to beats are always dark. They're always dark. They like hard tell, shit. Yeah, they either could tell a story or they just pull a certain emotion out of you. And this one was just like, I just took from things I've been around, um, codes, street laws, um, things that I came up on, you know? And that's how I basically made this record. And, you know, it's just a good record. I wanted to shoot a visual too. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. While well, Dante Q's in, what what project is this? One of Lucy's that's gonna be on SoundCloud, or is this one yeah, the project? Yeah, this is just like my first release, and I wanted my first release to be a video, and not just a song. So I got with um, my video team, Condito, and we filmed it, and it's just one of the one of the joints that we're gonna put out. All right, for All many. Right. We got the mother clip coming right up. DX exclusive on the way. Let us know what you guys think. This is uh, Lola Monroe with Mother. Am I saying it right? Mother. 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 That's how we say it on the East Coast. That's how we say it in DC. Um, we Midwest. We don't care. What yeah. Mother. Mother. With a V. Mother. Yeah. Check it out. Queen, fix your tone, who put you bitches on? The working tricks out of work to get your dishes chrome. Licks that put 50 on the wrist alone. Now niggas smellin' funny like mixed cologne, Miss Capone, contract killers over contrabands. Fuck with supply to coast niggas, I don't want your man. It's a whole another level, whole another devil, gold cover metal, whole one attempt, you all in the temple. Used to look out for these bitches, now I look out for these bitches. They they grillin' like they want this beef cookout on these chickens. Fuck with me, get you clapped, get your forehead at your weight. Then teach courses at your gravesite on how to catch a snake. Didn't I teach you never steal, never beg? Amputated motion cost the arm and a leg. What you do, turn on your bitches? For a nigga who would fuck him He knocked you off your hustle Now you plotting to get it from him When we talk real We ain't talking about you 
speak about respect, niggas know the doubt who Cruise to your block like they too sweet Coop color carrot match the Jesus piece They don't pay too cheap just to lay you deep They ain't gotta pray to eat cause they pray to eat Niggas way too geek to betray who sleep Like you slick ass Rico and Ace too weak Mark my mans for the keys and I sing ass niggas When I come home I'm still gonna be the king ass niggas For the bling mass killers ain't no thing ass niggas I'm broke, run up on you run that ring ass niggas At this OG Big homie told me, when they do you like that, just go low key. You gon' get right back, just go OT. Only fuck with niggas closely. If they hold these, solid like a trophy. If money never made nobody real, show me. If two time you twice to be where the dope be. It was good. It was good. I like the song. I like the video. Glad you're here with us to enjoy it. For sure. Thank you. Stephen Mob said, "Niggas smell funny like mixed cologne." Okay, girl. Little slight, slight. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the Night Rider said, "Damn, Lola, you were so dope at rap." Thank you. And Sean said he smashed on the low. I think she smashed you. With them hands and with them bars, Sean. Okay. <laughs> hey, speaking of mixed cologne, what do you? What is the tackiest cologne you smell on? Dude, you're like, man, ugh, get. The tack- What's the wackest scent? I Let's mean, do okay. best and worst. Best scent for a guy. Um, YSL. I'm trying to learn while I'm here. YSL is. Which one was the YSL one? It's the YSL one. It's in a black bottom. It's really good. Dolce Blue is really good. Yeah, those are like. Two top. And Versace has one that's pretty good. Fellas, we're trying to give you a million dollars of the game for nine ninety nine. YSL is really good though for men. To my send to my PayPal. Yeah, the night rider said your flow is sick. Uh Scott Scholar? Scholar ninety seven said, You're ready for war, girl. Get it, Nikki and Cardi. It's hip hop. Competition is mandatory. No. Mm, emojis and shit. Mm, emojis and shit. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Should you be going at other female rappers or should you guys be bringing it into unity first? Hip hop is definitely competitive. So I think that you should always have the competitive essence in it. Um, but as far as going at a chick, you got to give me a reason, right. honestly. You know what I mean? Because right. I'm not going to do it just to do it. That's not really even my, my swag. Okay. You know? But definitely competition is always fun for sure. Tashana J. Cooper said, love it. Thank you. Still talking about that mother video. Thank you. The Honorable Natalie Cruz said, that was hard as fuck. Love Natalie it. Crew. Thank you. Uh, Adam Quest said, that beat though, babe. Yes. Adam right, Quest. That that beat, yeah, yes. Uh, and Malik Harris said, uh, she wants you to break down some of these bars. Yeah, so give, give us an acapella. Which what, one? Yeah, I don't know. Just start from your favorite part of it. The one where you was like, ooh, ooh, the one, you know, you wrote it like, ooh. Um, <laughs> hmm. Is that what you sound like when you yeah, do enjoy you something you wrote? When, I guess Is so. that a good... Uh... I, I take it as a good thing. <laughs> Tell them, give me a line. Yeah, give us a line, Malik. Give me a line so I could explain it. And uh, Kenny Santiago still wants you to do more with King Lowe's. You see that? Yeah. Well, we did was... the Lemon remix on the GOAT. Okay. So go check out the GOAT. We'll drop that in goat the comment section for y'all. GOAT take. I did, we did that remix for Rouse Lemon. Right up. So, uh, you know, you, you talked about, you know, like making hard music. Is it is it the, the B more, the DMV in you that, you know, you know, keeps you more on the edge of your side and, you know, instead of making like Chanel records or... Yeah, no for Gucci sure. And it's, it's definitely the DC in me, for sure. It's, it's where I come from. Um, that plays a major part in the, the the music, the beats that I pick, the way I express myself. Even when I talk, it's like when I talk, it's, it's you don't really see too much a difference between the way I talk and the music that I make. Um, and so that's how you know it's authentic. Sure. As well, you know what I mean. Sometimes when you see with artists, they they sound different from 
how they make music from the topics to how they even sound. And so um, it's all the same. So it's definitely where I come from. The things I grew up around, um, the codes and the morals, like my OGs taught me, you know, it's all of that. Fame, sh- say Young M.A. featuring Lola Monroe. Oh, dope. Young M.A. Mm. dropped that video. It was Walk. It wasn't even like a full video. It was like her in the room, just walking and rapping her shit. That, it was so hard. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a dope collab. I think so, too. You guys are on the same, yeah. you know, same eye to eye. Speaking of authentic, how authentic was The Wire, in your opinion? Um... Well, you know, I'm not from Baltimore, I mean, but it's got plenty of be more D, uh, DC yeah. scenes in it, you know, back and forth, you know, moving them packages. I, it might have been like a little reach. I think it was a little reach. King Lo um, said the same thing. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, like they had the essence of it, but it was a bit of a reach. Uh, fame sh- said you fire. I think everybody's feeling that. I haven't seen one bad yeah. comment yet. You and good. honestly, it's just like the start. That was just a joint I made, and we were just like, fuck it, let's just shoot a video to it. So it wasn't even much, you know, put into it like that, like that. So can't wait for them to hear the other stuff. Okay. So yeah. all the records are not even just, it's not just that sound. You know, I have different vibes. What's the name of the project? All Hail the Queen. Mm, okay, so you coming for the crown. I'll have the queen, of course. Mm. Can there be more than one crown in your opinion? Yes. What do you think, Jake? Nope. Yeah. Just one. It can Championship be. Championship or bust. <laughs> it can be. Multiple levels of success, but... I mean, it was Kim and Foxy. Foxy one ever really took it. Love, so it can't be one way. thing. Don't, don't do Foxy. Yeah, like she it. took it in her own mind. In her own way. No, don't do Foxy. Yeah, like, yeah. But I honestly feel like the game is changing. Honestly. I do feel like... I don't know if it's just the hope in me. Um, I feel like the doors are opening up for more diversity. It was like that when Queen Latifah was out in the end. Saw and right. and you know, it was like that. So it might be coming back around where we have the different girls that are out. Even when... Eve and Missy and Kim were out at the same time. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's a chance. It seems like that that level of good, of successful, even sales-wise, tremendous success, there's a lot more room for that. It's going to be a wider open plane. But if you look, Jay-Z is still, Jay-Z's status hasn't been affected just because now there's 10 times more new artists coming out. Kendrick, who's been out for, what, eight, nine years, almost a decade? Kendrick is still <clears throat> able to kind of thrive like he is. It's not like there's always new people jumping that spot. The the top of the top kind of remains unchanged, ba- you know, despite the flooding of, of yeah. artists. So, so I think that's that's something that I always used to argue when people say the music ain't shit these days, which is right. yeah. very untrue. Well, what do you think? What do you think about all the littles on SoundCloud and everything? Does you feel like they're Messing up your journey to the crown, or it's fans no. attention spans all over the place where they can't. I don't think it's messing up my journey at all. Um, like I said, I feel like it's room for everything, you know. Right. I just do. Um, I don't think it stops anybody else from um, making it just because somebody else came out. You know, I think it's just room for everybody. Right. I think it gets in the way. Uh, re- I'm texting Black Thought right now. I didn't forget. Yes. Uh, Reanimix Review says, I like her voice and how it sits sonically. Thank you. Yeah, you, got, yeah, you, you got that. Thank you. You, yeah, you got that rapper song. voice. Yeah. Every time, anytime I'm in a studio or I play a record for somebody, that's the first thing they go to, my tone and my voice. It's always the best thing when a rapper, not as much with singers, it doesn't happen that often, but when a rapper talks like they rap, you kind of feel a little like... Like it's a special moment when yeah. you're talking to him. Yeah. DMX. Let's jump right into it. It's the holiday season. We got we can get a Christmas rap artist. DMX. That that's that's gonna be the life goal because just him speaking is honestly as entertaining as mm-hmm. a DMX song. Yeah. For sure. Have a great 2018 DMX. We want a new album and a healthier lifestyle for you, sir. The, uh, I bet you the record will still sound the same. He come out with a record today. It'll still sound the same. I hope so. I hope so. Swiss Beats, we're looking to you for that too. Mm-hmm. Can only do so much. 
Dame Grease. Adam Quest says, are you putting Mother on YouTube today? And I said, we're putting it on Hip Hop DX. Yeah, we're going to put it on Hip Hop DX. Absolutely. Um, Joshua S. said, dope song. Love that I can hear everything that you are saying clearly. Thank you. What do you what, how do accolades affect you? You know, does it... Does it give you fuel, or you just brush them off? You've probably been hearing them your whole life, or what? No, it definitely gives me fuel. It motivates me. Like, just the way they might hit me up and say, oh, you inspire me by the things you say. Me inspiring them inspires me. It just keeps me going. It keeps me, you know, it just pushes me to um, get back in the studio or just still create music. I think I'm in a space right now where I'm more focused on the fans and the supporters more than the naysayers or the haters. I think I've already, like, fought and proved myself enough that right. I can rap, I do spit, I am a lyricist. So now all that is just like set to the side and it's more about focusing on those that I inspire and I touch. I love this question. In your opinion, what is a lyricist? Um, someone that puts thought into the way they put their words together. Mm. You know, an artist or a rapper that um, the words matter to them. What they're saying matters to them, you know. Mm. Um, when I, Coherency. when I, yeah, when I focused on getting be better as a lyricist, I started studying wordplay, metaphors, bridges, um, and just really ha the science behind writing, you know. And Lowe's taught me a lot of that. You ready for another cologne fragrance caliber <laughs> question? I'm excited for this one. This is gonna be great. <laughs> so, dudes. We, we got, this is why we love Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, because we loved Michael Corleone as a character. Mm. Come on, Scarface, you know, the merchandising got to be in the billions from right. the posters on college kids' walls. Who is the female movie character that you really, really love, or you really, even when you were younger or now, that you really admired? And if you want, the male character as well. Who's the, uh, as they would say, PTF, boss ass bitch that you. <laughs> Uh, because I, I was more into what about Cleo. Hmm. Cleo set it off. Cleo yeah. Tifa. I can't remember. Jada Pink was stony. I think stony, right? I always love Jada movies. And the sequel, Girls Trip. <laughs> too. I like Carrie Washington. <laughs> ah, in yeah, what scandal? Cool. Carrie Washington is that where? I just like. I mean, character, horror. character, like yeah. oh, like character. Scarface. Doesn't have to be gangster, but just you know. Al Pacino just always been my favorite. Mm, it's hard to argue. Honestly. He's the man. Yeah, I, I kind of always go to, to the males. Sorry. Mm. Oh, <laughs> good. Hey, it's yeah. hardcore. I do. I told you to say sanitation, not sanitarium. Al, Al Pacino and Jay-Z were like my tops growing up that I always was just like, damn, I rock with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Word up, word up. All right, let's get into some uh, our year-end picks. Uh, everybody who's visiting yes. the site, you will see that Hip Hop DX is currently doing our uh, Hip Hop DX uh, Year End Awards. You know, 15 years strong, I think, and uh, this year is no different. Um, you know, we've been rolling out uh, during the holiday season, getting a lot of good feedback. You know, a lot of uh, testy conversation. Uh, so let's run down the ones that we have. We still have yet to announce the album of the year. But Lola, actually, what's your album of the year? You know, I know you and King Lose were prepping for 2018, but what was your album of the year this year? What was the one that stayed in your rotation? Hmm. So funny because really the wrong one to just ask these things as far as within a year because You'll I'm be not the show. artist. Yeah, I'm, I can't even fake the funk. I'm not the artist that just goes to see who came out with what. I'm so locked into my stuff, sometimes maybe to a fault, because I probably should listen to other shit. Um, well, sometimes it might affect you the wrong way. You know, you don't, a lot of people, like I, I know this uh, young artist, uh, his manager made him stop listening to Drake, because. He know, started sounding like mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I hear a lot of artists do that. Does, was his name Logic? The young artist? <laughs> <name? laughs> Shots fired. Hood of Hood of Shots fired. Um, but I listen to a lot of, I still listen to a lot of 90s shit. All right. That's like my go to. Um, I like SZA. Um, I liked Uzi's project. Um, um, yeah. So, in your opinion, Reasonable Doubt was the 
2018, oh, 2017 damn. album of the year. Shit. Oh, God, could I vote for that, too? That's my go-to album, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, sure. But seriously. Well, uh, okay, uh, so we'll run down Hip Hop DX's picks and then and watch her get the ah, hold on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that one. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, our best song of the year, Hip Hop DX's best song of the year, Kendrick Lamar Duckworth. That was the one that brought damn all together you know we you know at the very end night wonder b talked about uh top dog and his dad almost you know getting into some deadly mm-hmm. uh conversation but you know luckily things turned out uh well mm-hmm. remember that part right it was the last song on damn okay <laughs> locked in <laughs> i'm about my own shit <laughs> kind of with her on that one mm-hmm. what was your hottest what was your best what was your best song we got the hottest first song of all it was song. a single that actually hit the radio. Not that a song well, has to be. But. No, we have a hottest. We, we we split it up, so we do have a hottest song and we do have a best song. So Duckworth was the one that. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Which had the love, love? I like love. I, I like loyalty. Love is my favorite song on that album. Yeah, I like love. I personally liked a uh, huge big crit fan. I thought if uh, if it wasn't a double album, if he would have released. 13 of those motherfuckers as the first album and the other 13 or my math is probably wrong as like hey these are this was the lost tapes whatever that first one would have been possibly dethroning damn but phenomenal album uh getaway and Subenstein were probably my favorites on there i enjoy his brand of music so i probably put sub Subenstein as my uh as my favorite song of the year that's not a single that's a good, yeah, okay. That's a good pick. Uh, even though he's done like my sub like eight times. Right? I know it, and I love it every time. It's like I'm Fast not. and the Furious. Uh, yeah, it, that's a good <laughs> point. That's a good point. Okay, our hottest song for Hip Hop DXs. And you guys, I dropped the link in the comments, but obviously, Bodak Yellow. Yeah, of course. Like, come on. Yeah. And any debates there, Jake? The Spanish version. <laughs> 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 There you go. And I actually heard that, you know, a couple of weeks ago for the first time. How is that in here? How it, it's in Spanglish. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 probably like 85% Spanish. Okay. You know, all the cuss words were in English. Mm, okay. <laughs> most, most slept on album. Representing your neck of the woods. Go Link at what cost? Mm. You, down with, you guys down with Bill? I like Go Link. I like all of them. I do. That was the album with Crew on it, ladies and gentlemen. So that Crew, one. Crew is a good song. Yeah. It got nominated for a Grammy. It did. Which is dope because all the artists on there is from the DMV. It did. Yeah. It's, it's, it put you guys on. Yeah. So that was uh, really Between, you know, you, you and Los, Shy Glizzy, uh, Gold Link. I don't think, it, did, did they still live in the DMV? I don't know. All, y'all, sure. all y'all transplants, y'all. I'm not sure. And then, um, Lowe's did a remix with that trail. So that trail. I still haven't I like him as a person. Still haven't got into any Oh of no. Whenever someone says starts like with he's a nice guy, mm-hmm. that means he's Is it because you haven't listened to the I like stuff? No, oh, I looked at everyone who came out. Rick Ross was pushing it in, okay. in, in my face. You know he was locked up, he just got out. I know, I know the Gleesh. No, 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 I know the Gleesh mixtape cover. That's uh, I know. I know that. he parties hard. Fat troll. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I I'm gonna say for my slept on album, I'm going back to Old Head Jake, MC8, DJ Premier. Which way is west? We've been waiting for that for many many years, and it did not disappoint. And I thought the big takeaway was DJ Premier, who hails from Houston, put a New York sound on the map along with Rizza, a few other guys. And now that now has shown, dude, West Coast is sound is no problem for him either. Primo, man. Right. Uh, Chia. I'm, just, I'm just gonna put this out here, which you guys hear prime too. I'm just gonna say that. Cause you just get all the exclusives. Hey, E I C T C. It's a tough <laughs> job, but somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> somebody's gotta do it. But yeah, uh, shout out to Gold Link. Shout out to uh, DJ shout Premier. That that is all. That was also in our list of most slept on albums. Um, gang, gang to uh, lead the grab. Absolutely. What else we got? Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. R&B album of you, Sizzle with Control. She is such a fucking goddess. Like for real, she is. She's so dope. I just love everything about her. The records that she makes um, is not really the typical 
R&B song, and you can tell that she just goes into her own world and creates these songs from just whatever she's going through or just her own personal thoughts. I don't think she just, she follows anything. She just does her. Right. Now she's just such a great person, too. The first time I ever met her, she just walked up to me and gave me a hug. Yeah. Like, like I had known her for years. And it was dope. Yeah. We were doing some shit for her. Absolutely. Yeah. Just just a really good part. You could feel it in the music. Yeah. R&B album, Jake? Um, did Post Malone Stoney come out uh, this year? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's obviously SZA. Yeah. Can we salute TDE for just how many different lanes yeah. they control yeah. in in the game? Yeah. For Absol, sure. Schoolboy, SZA, Kendrick. You could honestly argue yes. Schoolboy's album was the best album of last year, and you have a solid argument. He's, I mean, they're they're great. They are, for sure. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, what else we got on the list? Uh, R&B songs is a love the Laura. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Oh, uh, boy, if I were to argue, I'd say, uh, what's off a of star boy? <laughs> uh, Black Dot. I like. Exactly. What did he say? Uh, he gave me a laughing emoji. Ah, <laughs> I, I fair you. enough. I love you, Black Dot. I'm just trying to start shit. <laughs> um, R&B song. I like a uh, reminder from Star Boy. Personally, that's the one that my playlist. Did that come out this year? Did it not? No. So you're gonna pick. You're gonna. Damn you're it. gonna fall in line and pick Love Valor, <laughs> Right. It's Love Valor. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> come up of the year. You know this artist. Uh, you know really. You know built their brand up and uh, you know came up. What what making it happen? This is just the easiest year to pick anything. Yes. Yeah, uh, There's just man. not much yeah, that. For sure. Is no denying that shit. She had a great year. And here's a fun fact too. In last year's Hip Hop DX Awards, we gave Cardi B with the worst album of the year. The, the worst what? Album of the year. The Gangster Bitch Volume One. Oh. Worst album of the year. And now she's uh, the come up of the year. A lot can change in a year. It can. It can. For sure. It's like a holy like on the on that cover is like she's got like the forty ounce bottle and like holding I it do, crotch. I remember. It's it just not. A, and now she's like Dolce and Cabana. And, Bodak Yellow. Yeah, a lot can change. Okay. She definitely had it. But I, I, I salute her work ethic. You know, that's the type of work ethic that we need to see for yeah. artists if you want to, you know, get to the next yeah. level. You know, or obviously just not listening to shit that comes out. Like, uh, so lock into your own. Lock like, into your own shit for sure. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Yeah, check out the rest. We got the, today we have the uh, producer of the year coming up. Uh, Mike Will, Metro Booming, Pauly Shore, they're all up for that award. Pauly Shore. Pauly Shore. Uh, the Weasel. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's close this one out with some New Year's resolutions. Mm-hmm. Jake. Damn it. Start with her. I'm going to think of mine. No, she, we, we, got, we got to build her up. You know, she's right, going right, gonna, gonna, go. to drop the mic on us. <sighs> okay, well... For those of you that have been watching this show, which is probably most of you, and thinking, wow, that guy's beard is getting really handsome. (laughs) Yo, salute to James Harden. This shit is harder to maintain than it looks. I'm always spilling shit. People don't tell me because I got fake friends. I'll have food just sitting there for like 20 minutes, and I have to find out in the mirror. Your mustache kind of gets all in your... So this is a... I know you guys think he probably just falls out of bed and just looks phenomenal like that. No, this is a lot of work. So I'm going to keep the beard going in 2018. Thought about going clean shaven. It's not happening. So to grow a great beard, slim up a little bit and be camera ready so that I can balance out EICTC. There you we go. can be just the... There you go. Nick, Nick Polymer says he's going to evict my tenant tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's going to evict his tenant tomorrow. So. Damn. Well, that's the New Year's. Everybody thing. gotta have a dream. <laughs> Damn! Hey. Right before New Year's, that's how you're gonna start their um, New Year off. Hey, hey, it. hey, it might be better for the for the whole complex. It might yeah. be turning into a roach motel, or it might be you know. Yeah, I guess. Running Damn, a meth lab rough, out of there. Yeah. Yeah, Nick, he's a heartless bastard. But if Nick is from Bakersfield. New Year's, Nick. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is pretty simple. Uh, continue to make Hip Hop DX the dominant uh, s- s- spot for the culture. You know, keep getting bomb ass interviews like this. And, you know, thank you guys for rocking with us. Uh, you know, easy peasy. You know I mean, I'm pretty sure I have more, but, you know, that one's on the forefront it's of the It's the market. same goal as for me because I figure if the beard comes through, <laughs> all that shit, all that does <laughs> itself, you know? Right? We get the guests. Right, right. 
All right, that leads us to Miss Lola Monroe. Well, mine is, aside from just putting out the music and pushing and building up my brand, because that's a given, that's definitely the focus. It's definitely to um, help people. You know, I have like the Vegan Goddess brand right now. Um, Plug. Yeah. Where can we find that? On, on Instagram, at Vegan Goddess. But the E in Goddess is the number three. Mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely to help people. Um, as far as health, fitness, diet, um, I went through a whole like skin transformation and just helping women right now. That's like one of my main, main goals um, and just using my platform for that. Nice, nice. What a lovely 2018 it will be, especially for you yeah. vegan women out yeah. there. Even if you're not vegan though, it's not for like, you don't have to be vegan, right. but just like um, aligning yourself just as a woman and changing your diet even if it's not vegan, just becoming more healthier, fitness lifestyle, and just evolving and growing. Nice, nice. Shout out to Felicia from Friday, opened a vegan restaurant. What is her real name? Opened a vegan restaurant wow. over in the South Central uh, area. That's no, dope. no, she's she I'm just started it. Got Angela it. something, I know that. Angela Means. My yes. Yeah, Plugaroni. Go check it out. It's like in a donut shop. Hmm. And she's got a vegan spot. And it's apparently pretty damn good. Well, well, yeah. still, well, thank you. Hi, Felicia. Well, <laughs> well, the next time we talk to you guys, we appreciate everybody tuning in. It will be 2018. Yeah. So make sure you meet us here. Make sure you don't do anything crazy on New Year's or New Year's Day. You know, be here. You know, we got to live. There's plenty of hip hop to indulge in. She's got plenty of projects coming out. King Los too. Yeah. You know, so make sure you guys meet us. But at the same time, we wholeheartedly, on behalf of everybody Hip Hop DX, we appreciate you guys for rocking with us all year long. Uh, tune in later on this afternoon. We have the litmus test with the world famous DJ Head, 92.3, representing the real. And uh, it's, it's going to be lit. Lola, where we can find you on our social media? Instagram, I am underscore Queen Row. Um, same as my Facebook. My YouTube is I am Queen Row. And then my Twitter is the T H E E underscore Lola Monroe. Jacob? J S R O H N, Twitter and Instagram. There you go. Fantastic Simple. stuff on there. And of course, I am It's Me TC15 on all across the board. Find me. I'm verified, motherfucker. <laughs> DX Live, we out. See you guys next year.